G'day, g'day. Welcome to Easy Jeezy, Map and Made Breezy. Okay, uh, now I've got a delicious bolognese sauce cooking on the stove, so I've got to be really quick because I don't want it to burn. Um, so this is just going to be a quick run-through of how to get started in ArcGIS Pro and how to add some data to your map. Okay, so first of all, when you open it and log in, you'll be confronted with a screen like this. Okay, on the left, you've got your recent projects. You can also open a previous project down here. Uh, but what we're going to do today, we're going to start with a new one, a new blank template. So we click on map, give our project a name. Let's say Orca Test Project 2. Okay, choose where you want to save it. Click OK. And then the magic will begin. Okay. Um, so what you're going to see, you're going to see a, a default base map. So in this case, a topographic base map of the world that you can sort of use the mouse wheel and the mouse to scroll around. Uh, so zoom in and out, change the scale. You can hold the right mouse button and drag the mouse to zoom in and out with a bit more precision as well. Uh, on the left side, you've got the contents panel. Okay, so where you're going to see all your layers that you're working with. Um, you can hide it, you can close it if you do close it and you need it back. Just go on the view ribbon at the top, the tab at the top, and click on contents. Okay, on the right hand side, you have a lot of the other tools you're working with will appear here and you can, they can hide, you can hide them, you can drag them, move them around, etc. Okay, um, so you can just, all these windows, you can sort of make them float and you can dock them top, left, right, bottom, etc. And dock it over here. Um, and along the top, yeah, in this ribbon, you've got a lot more functions where you save it, open files, all your geoprocessing tools, etc. Okay, but let's get started with adding our data. So um, if we go to the map tab at the top, okay, and you've got the add data button. Now in the drop down arrow, you've got a few more options of how to add, add data. Okay, most of the time you're going to be fine either clicking the first one or just clicking the button add data. So let's do that. Um, now in this case, I've got four common uh, data types. Okay, I've got CSV, so comma separated values, like a spreadsheet, I guess. Uh, you've got a shape file, uh, so very common, common format, uh, slightly older. You've got a file geo database, which is a folder with lots and lots of files. Uh, sorry, the shape file generally comes with about five or six files together, so you'll need to get all those files. Uh, usually they're, they're, they're sort of downloaded in a zip format, but you need to unzip it. Um, the file geo database is many more files, again, often, if it's shared in, it'll be shared in a zip format, so just unzip that. And then you've got your geo package, uh, a slightly newer uh, format there, uh, where uh, it's generally just in one file. And then you can open that, you've got your layers inside. So we're adding our data, so let's start with the geo package. So in this case, you've got a little drum, I'll click, and inside you've got a few different layers in this case. So I'm just going to click this one and click OK. And it's going to zoom in automatically to where your data is. And you can see these are some sample points in the neighborhood of Orca in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Um, and you can sort of zoom around, you can zoom in and out. That will adjust the size of the, the points accordingly. Um, if you ever sort of get a bit lost and you, you don't remember where, you're, where the points are, you can just right click on the layer in the left side and go zoom to layer and we'll zoom right back there. Okay. Um, if you uh, if you click on the symbol, okay, you can modify it, you can change the colors, you can use these sort of templates here in the gallery, and you can search for some here. If you click on properties, you actually have a bit more control and you can say, okay, I want it to be size 12 and I want the color to be sort of a, a baby poo yellow. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. Okay, and then if you click on the layers, you can have a bit more control and you can choose the outline color, maybe the outline width. Okay. And you can see that there, but you can play around with your hearts, uh, your hearts content there with these with the gallery. You can also get to the symbology by right clicking on the layer and going on symbology. Or if you click on the layer, you can uh, go to appearance and then you've got symbology and you can play around with it there. In this case, it's just a single symbol. We haven't uh, symbolized it by anything at the moment. Um, okay, if you want to rename your layer, you can just click on it very slow, like a, a slow double click. Okay, we say sample point, geo package, enter. You can also do that if you right click and go properties. And in the name section in general, you can just rename it there, say okay. Okay, so that's our uh, sample points geo package. If we open, if we right click on it, sorry, and go to attributes table, 
we can actually see what's inside this geo package or the data there. And you got your attributes here where you can resize or you click on the name and you can pull it out to float it. Okay, float that window and you can look and you can see all the different fields that you've got, points, time, lap long, the air temps, etc. everything that we've measured there at these sample points. Okay, you can scroll along all there. Okay, if you want to dock that back, again, just click and dock it to whichever side you want and then you can just close it down there. Okay, so that's our sample points for our geo package. If we want to add the other formats, let's go back and go to map and click add data again. In this case, you've got the shapefile. Now, as I said, the, let's go to the shapefile next. The shapefile, it generally comes with about six, seven different individual files, which you need to keep all on. Um, but when you actually go to open it in ArcGIS Pro, you'll just see the .shp file. So let's just click on that. And you can see there, I can, I can it's, it's on top there. So it's, it's floating on top now, it's disappeared because I can click and drag to sort of move the, change the order. Um, let's untick the geo package so we can see just the shape file and basically works in the same way once it's there. And again, we can just click that and say, shape file, okay. And uh, everything else, once it's in there, basically works the same. You can see if we open up the attribute table, this one has less attributes. It's just a, a more simple version of the same, the same points. Okay. But there you have it with your shape file. Uh, let's click again and add our geo package. So .gdb, sorry, our file geo database. And there you'll see a little drum and inside you'll see different layers. Okay. So let's click on that one there. It's a point layer. There we go. It's added it in. Let's untick that. And you got your file geo database, right click, go to the attributes table and you can see it comes in a very similar format to the geo package of all the data there. Okay, let's close that down. The last format, you, which is pretty common, which you might come across is a CSV format. This is a little bit different. Drop down arrow, okay, for our data map, add data. And we want X, Y point uh, data there. So let's click on that. In this case, generally the CSV file will have latitude, longitude, so I have those coordinates uh, built into it. So input table, um, but we need to, we need to open it up, don't we? Let's go desktop. CSV, there it is. Okay, you can give it a name, or we can just leave it as a default and change the name later. Uh, X field, okay, so in this case it's labeled longitude, but you can choose one of the other fields there. Uh, it's, it's picked out longitude already, okay, and our Y field for latitude. If, if it wasn't, if it was labeled something else, then you might need to search through and choose the, uh, the appropriate fields. No Z field here. Uh, the coordinate system, don't worry about this too much at the moment, but yeah, if it's WGS 1984, generally you'll be fine there to begin with. Um, but we can look at that in later guides. Click run. Could take a few seconds depending on your file, could be a bit longer. Uh, depending if it's a very large file. Okay, let's hide that. There we go. It's given this little these little sort of pins, symbols. Could hide that as well. And let's hide there. Yeah. And it's called TSV. Okay, and there we have it. Same thing, open the attribute table, and you presented with all the data there. Um, now you can actually change uh, many different ways to actually change these formats. So, for example, if you wanted to change the CSV into a file geo database, you could just right click on it, say data, and you could export those features to a file geo database. Uh, those that, those sort of functions we can look at uh, look at later. But from there, you can just click on save to save your project. Okay, um, and then we'll look at more things we can do with this data in, in the upcoming guides. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later. Ciao.